Hello, everyone. My name is Sasan. I'm a postdoc at uh, Paolo Hammond Lab and Daryl Irvin, uh, Irvin Lab at the Koch Institute. Today, I'd like to talk about some immunology aspects of human body. Um, so our tissues in the body, such as the skin, has immune cells um, that reside there and pass through. And these are very important for monitoring different diseases. However, when you go to the clinic, they often get blood draws from you or get a little bit of biopsy from your tissue. Oftentimes, for some diseases, you can, the clinicians cannot detect the markers that are responsible for, for example, autoimmune diseases or some infectious diseases and even cancer within this uh, regular immunophenotyping. For analyzing the tissue, such as the skin, there are gold standards in the clinic. One method is called suction blister. What happens is that there is a cup that attached to the skin and by applying the vacuum, uh, it can appear some blisters on the skin. Here's a heads up for the blisters image. And then you can remove the blisters liquid and get information about the biomarkers and immune cells from the area. However, the, this has some drawbacks. One is that this pressure induced uh, rise in the temperature, which is detrimental for some cytokines and biomarkers that resist in our tissue. And also you cannot use these approaches on uh, fragile skins like in the older population and also on infants. And also talking to clinicians, children don't like this. So we devised the method called a microneedle skin patches that can go to the skin, it has tiny projections, it doesn't induce any pain or redness, and it can sample immune cells and um, cytokines from the skin, similar to the golden standards in the clinic. Now let's look at these microindels. They are in the, uh, about one to two square centimeter in size. Think of them as a smart band-aid. So you apply them to the skin, these tiny projections are about 500 micrometer, less than a millimeter, it goes to your skin, and by going to the skin, the hydrogel that we coated these microneedles with swells, and by swelling, it can bring the immune cells and cytokines to the, to the microneedle patch. Later on, we remove the patch, we wash it, and look at the cells. This way, we can get an information about the status of different diseases through skin tissues. We have validated our method to, uh, by analyzing this on animal models. We vaccinate the mice, do the boost, and do a skin challenge where we can induce some artificial inflammation on their skin to see how we can capture these cells. By applying these patches, we can get a, a profile of their changing of different biomarkers in the skin. We can go from day one to day seven and on, ongoing, analyze, for example, how these inflammatory biomarkers change over time. This is particularly important many of the available methods in the clinic, you cannot sample one patient every day, or let's say hours. There are like harsh biopsies and patients are not willing to participate. But, but this method is non-invasive and you can sample patient over time. In parallel, we can also get information about immune cells. This purple colored stuff on the tines of needles shows the immune cells that gather into the microneedle patch. But let's take a have a closer look to these cells. So um, the false color, these uh, cells, these are immune cells based on the morphology that they have. Um, and if we take a look at, uh, take a closer look at them, this morphology is kind of telling us that these are most likely lymphocytes, although we do secondary approaches, more uh, quantitative approaches such as flow cytometry and single cell sequencing to get a real nature of, this, of these cells. But, Generally, this image shows how these immune cells over time crawl into this smart band-aids and give us information about the background of the disease and response to the therapeutics and vaccines. Uh, we successfully got RB approval to test these patches on human patients. We have uh, different cohorts of patients. So as you can see here, these patches can apply on the skin with a, with a mild pressure and it doesn't induce much redness or inflammation on this skin after application. Uh, we, are, we, are have, we have a cohort of patients with autoimmune skin diseases, such as vitiligo, psoriasis, dermatitis, here in Massachusetts that we use these patches for monitoring them over time. 
one really particular important thing is that, for example, if you look at this allergic reaction on the skin, over time we can monitor one patient and see how they, the immune cells and biomarkers change in the, uh, in the skin over time. This is particularly important because, for example, when a patient with autoimmune disease go to the clinic, they often prescribe steroids or drugs that uh, clinicians have to wait for months to get a result. This way, we can apply or prescribe therapeutics, test it, and get a quicker turnaround of the, the effectiveness of this drug. And also, you can predict the onset, flare-up, and remission of these autoimmune diseases. We have also have an RB approval to test these patches on the uh, women with ovarian cancer. So they wear these patches around the abdomen and based on the changes of the biomarkers, we can get an idea about the progression of the disease, the onset of the disease and the response to the uh, therapeutics. With that, I would like to acknowledge uh, the people who helped me, especially uh, my superstar technician, Ryan, who is here sitting here and my uh, MSRP summer intern, and of course, Paolo and Daryl and all the people in Hammond and Irvine Lab who helped me, and without them, it was impossible. Um, very thankful to the nanotechnology material call, Abigail, David, and Peggy. Uh, they helped me a lot with the imaging, and a big shout out to Erica for everything from the submission of these images to, this, to today with all the organization, and of course, the funding, especially the bridge project for our ovarian cancer project. Thank you so much for that. Thank you, Stefan.